Hey everybody, JVB here. Today we're going to walk through deploying a package with Zarf. This is from a series of walkthroughs, the previous one being creating this package. So if you haven't already, there'll be a link in the description below with this set of walkthroughs. And let's get started. So first and foremost, if you haven't already, you're going to need a Kubernetes cluster. If you've been through the previous walkthroughs, you already have one. To check if your Kubernetes cluster is up and running, you can use kubectl. We're going to kubectl and then cluster info. And you can see here, I got the cluster cluster fused. We're testing this on purpose. I actually have it. I just stopped it earlier. I'm going to start up my cluster. I'm using K3D. And we'll use my package to play walkthrough. So this is now up and running. The next thing you want to make sure is that Zarf has been initialized in this cluster so Zarf can handle the application lifecycle for your air gapped environment. To do this, we can actually use the Zarf list command to see if it's installed. Oops, Zarf package list. You can see here, we had the init package, it's already there. If it wasn't there, you could actually install it using the Zarf init command. Now, this command is idempotent, that just means you can run it over and over and over again. Uh, so I could run it here, it would be just fine. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna hit no. So first, let's navigate to where that package is. If you use the previous walkthrough, it'll be somewhere like this. I keep everything in source, and I make my source trees mimic the, uh, the online source tree. We're going to defend unicorns and Zarf. If you haven't grabbed it, use the walkthrough on grabbing source code. And this is an examples and DOS games. We can see here the Zarf package DOS games ARM64 ZST. You might have an AMD64. I'm running on a Mac M1. It creates an ARM64 package for, for me. Yours might vary. If you try to deploy an ARM64 on an AMD64 and vice versa, you'll have some issues. So make sure you have the right package for your machine. So now if I do a Zarf package deploy, if I were to hit, just hit enter here, I'll get suggestions for packages in the current directory. If I hit tab, I'll get suggestions. It's the only one there. Otherwise, I can just do a Zarf package deploy with the actual file name afterwards. Let's go ahead and deploy this. You can use dash dash confirm, and it won't, it'll actually just skip through this part of asking you whether you want to deploy this. So if you were to use Zarf in like a CI CD scenario, uh, you could very certainly do so with a dash dash confirm flag. We can see here we have our DOS games, where it was created, who created it. It was me on this terminal. Uh, with a certain timestamp and with a certain version of Zarf. So Zarf and Zarf init packages are versioned. This one was built with 24.3. Let's go ahead and deploy this. Now, a couple errors could happen here. If, you, if this thing were to pause for like 30 seconds, do nothing, say I couldn't connect to Kubernetes, it means perhaps Kubernetes is down, or like you know, I had it before, I had it stopped, or maybe you don't have a cluster installed. Um, another error you might get is about not going to find the Zarf state file. So if it goes to deploy and complains that it can't find the Zarf state file, that means you probably didn't initialize Zarf, so just execute the Zarf edit command. And like that, we now have this running, and we can actually connect to some, some DOS games. So we're using the Zarf connect command. So Zarf connect basically uses a Kubernetes kubectl port forward to connect from your terminal into the cluster. So this is, uh, this is actually annotations on the Zarf package itself. Actually, let's take a quick look at that. If I were to go into the manifests and at the service, you can see here the annotations on the Zarf dev connect description and the Zarf dev connect URL uh, and the labels. And all of that is what fills in that Zarf connect, that Zarf connect list. At any time you want to see what packages are installed, you can actually use a Zarf package list. But let's go ahead and connect. I'm going to use the Zarf Connect Games. It's going to open up the port forward. And on my other screen, it actually opened up a browser window. I'm going to just drag that over here so you can see it. And we have our various games. So we can play Aladdin, we can play Mario, I see Quake and Doom. It looks like Prince of Persia and Warcraft. So different DOS games 
running right in the browser. If I were to launch, let's say, Mario here. And we have Mario and Luigi and start and no save and me. And we can walk around and jump and do Mario things. <laughs> the gravity's a little interesting on this for sure. Oh, love those, lo love those old school sound effects. All right, let's go ahead and close that. So once you're done with this Arc Connect, that will stay open in the browser until you hit Control-C and you're back into your command line. If you want to remove this, if you want to remove this package, you can again use Arc List to get the, uh, to get the actual name of this. We have it above, but I'm just doing it for completeness. See here, now we have the DOS Games package. Now, if you don't confirm that you will remove it, it will, you'll get an error like this. Zarf remove, or sorry, Zarf package remove. And if I do that, it'll say, oh, you didn't confirm. This is just a little safety feature to make sure you actually want to remove it. And that's what you want to remove. And I'll type in confirm. And it's been removed. In addition, you can also do, let's go ahead and re redeploy it real quick. Oops, forgot the actual, got the package. Oh, I'm in the manifest directory. Like, what am I doing? Our package deploy, this is our package, and confirm. We can skip the yes question. So you can remove either the way I just showed you, or you can remove actually using the package itself. And again, you have to use confirm, or you'll get an error. And just like that, we're done. So I've showed you now how to deploy packages with Zarf. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the video or join us on the Kubernetes Slack in the Zarf channel. A link will be in the description below. See you next time.